Well, that was fun. Welcome back to Podcast 61 of 2019. I'm your host, Kiev O'Neill. You can follow me on Twitter at OBKiev. Follow us or tweet us at The Odds Breakers. Also, social media slash The Odds Breakers. This episode is being sponsored by jazzsports.ag for a 50% sign-up bonus Please visit Jazz Sports. Use the promo code Odds Breakers. Terms and conditions apply. If you'd like to help us out with our costs and sponsor our podcast, we would love to help you out. Please visit theoddsbreakers.com. Click shop and become a member for $17.99 a month. You can get my plays and premium plays before the line moves. For $2 more, you can have all that. Become a patron subscriber. Get the podcast a little bit earlier. If nothing else, please visit theoddsbreakers.com. And become a Free Picks newsletter subscriber. And oh my goodness, our Free Picks are doing pretty good. Our podcast picks from last week, well, besides the Northwestern one, we did lose that one. That was the first Free Pick that we gave out of the week. But the second podcast, we hit all three of them. We hit the Troy, Georgia State over, hit the Nebraska, Indiana over. Those were easy. The Tulane hit towards the end. Um, <laughs> but that was a very close one. And uh, they blew it at the very end. But um, was happy to get the hook right there a uh, couple losses we had was the north carolina duke game north carolina should have beat them by a lot more they outgained them uh it was a nasty one but whatever well actually that one wasn't given out washington state was given out and they only lost by two points it was that sandwich spot with oregon i mentioned that with ralph and chris as well as the over for TCU, Texas. So what a great podcast last week. But as far as sides, we were, I believe, 10 and 10. I got to check that ETS. Uh, I think we might have been down a unit. But I'm actually happy about that because I didn't get a ton of line value. And obviously, I played Wisconsin. Did buy back a little on Ohio State, but didn't. I can't count it because I didn't send it out, obviously. It was a second half live bet. But sorry, second quarter live bet. But either way. Still hovering around even in college, kicking ass in the NFL. Hopefully that continues up over 20 units, I believe up 23 units in the NFL. So I just want to say for starting the recap here, we're starting with college. Uh, I was wrong about Chase Young being a top 10 draft pick because he's a top two draft pick. Okay. A top two. The most important positions in football is that, well, let's just say the most game affecting positions because you can argue that Mike Linebacker is more important, calling the plays, um, you know, obviously see, calling audibles on defense. That I guess you can say that's more important, but the more game affecting, obviously, is the quarterback position. And the edge rusher. That's why you see so many people try to get edge rushers this day and age in a passing type league. And Young is going to be a top two pick. Otherwise, there is absolutely something wrong. Quarterbacks might not pan out when you see them drafted. As you see with Mitch Trubisky drafted number two. Josh Rosen, top 15. You know. They don't always pan out, but edge rushers have a better chance of panning out, in my opinion. You know, they have metrics. There's not a lot of, you know, audibles and and uh, just straight up uh, execution on every single throw type deal. They are able to be measured properly. You see their instincts, and then you draft them. Young is a grand slam. All right as far as a pick and um, you know, who knows who's going to draft him. Maybe the jets, <laughs> maybe the Bengals, if they really believe they don't need a quarterback, uh, the dolphins need a quarterback. So I highly doubt that they draft him. Uh, the Redskins, pff, Dwayne Haskins, are you going to give him another year when two is out there? Maybe you wait for Trevor Lawrence. That's a possibility. 
you know. So just wanted to throw that out there that Chase Young is a top two draft pick in my opinion. Lots of games last weekend. Lots of rain affecting these games last weekend. Uh, pretty crazy. Um, starting with Pitt, you know, they pulled a Miami, playing Miami, turning the ball over, lost while out gaining them. You know, that's it's kind of funny playing Miami, you pull a Miami. But, uh, uh, you know, either way, Pitt blew that game. But it just kind of shows you the strength of the ACC right there. Thursday, we bet Houston um, versus SMU. They God, God almost caught SMU at the end there. SMU has that big look ahead spot to Memphis. So I'm glad we took the home dog. Home dogs on Thursday night are money. Um, a friend of mine also pointed that out named Randy. They are money. I, I want to see what their ATS is. If I, I can... Take a little time to pull it up. If you have it, go ahead and tweet it out to the odds breakers. I'm really curious what home dogs, college, and NFL does um, on Thursday nights because that's a money bet right there. And, uh, you know, just keep pounding it is my opinion. Let's go over to USC versus Colorado, the Friday game. I didn't touch it. You know, the over-under was, what, 65, 64, and it went pretty much landed at that number. USC almost blew it, but <laughs> Mel Tucker did blow it because he allowed 14 unanswered points for USC when he was winning, and he only lost by four. He was up 10 going into the fourth quarter. That is blowing a game. And I'll tell you this, I know a lot about Mel Tucker, and I did not like what I saw in the NFL at all. Now, yes, he was good on Georgia as a defense coordinator, but you also have to understand what kind of recruits he was dealing with. Looking at Auburn versus LSU, that was an awesome game, and LSU is the the truth. I did bet Auburn. Um, I actually bet it before Chris and Ralph came on and sent it out as a premium play. Bought back a little on LSU at the half, but won it won won money on it. So, I'll tell you this: I'm not fading LSU. <laughs> I'm not gonna. There's probably not going to be a spot where I fade them again because uh, they outgained the hell out of Auburn, and I'm not going to necessarily downgrade Auburn. Um, they did keep it close, but LSU, they, they they're the truth, and I gave them a very big upgrade. I think I have them as the fourth best team in my power ratings when I had them around fifth or sixth before, um, but that was uh, very interesting. Another interesting game was Oklahoma in Kansas State. They lost Kansas State, but you could tell in the fourth quarter who really was the better team, obviously, but they got jumped. They're flat. It was a flat spot for them, and uh, now it might cost them the college football playoffs because you know what? Georgia, they are in control of their own destiny. If LSU or Alabama, the loser of that game, as long as they don't lose any other games, which probably won't happen, look at the SEC, is going <laughs> to to the college football playoff. Now, if Alabama is on or LSU is undefeated and plays the SEC championship and loses to one loss Georgia, that gives three one loss SEC teams. You could, in theory, pencil all three of those teams in the college football playoffs, along with uh, it's looking like Ohio State, obviously, and Ohio State just going right into that game. They beat the shit out of Wisconsin, and the, it, the officiating wasn't bad at all. It was it was Wisconsin losing that game. It was rainy, of course, but their defense somewhat gave up at the end. At the same time, they were tired, freaking wet. They could see Cone just could not get it going. Now, he didn't have a ton of time to throw the ball, but he's going against the best edge rusher in the be and maybe a top two, top three D line in the whole game. You can see Wisconsin kind of kept it close. It was ten to three in the beginning of the third, or ten to seven in the beginning of the third, but they just kind of gave up because if you can't move the ball when you stack the box, that you're just going to lose. They're one dimensional on offense, you know, one dimensional. No RPO game to open it up to at least throw it over the linebackers' heads when they're stacking the box to the quick slant. None of that, and that's what's killing them. You know, it's one-dimensional, 
Ohio State is three-dimensional on offense. Not only do they have a running game in Dobbins, which is showing better than Taylor right now, they also have a quarterback that can run very fast. He got hit a couple times. I was wondering if he was going to stay in the game, but they pulled him at the very end, but he was fine. And they have a hell of a passing game. They have, they're have they three-dimensional. You stack the box against them, they're going to get the ball out quick, and they're going to find some crossing routes or receivers or quick slants. Actually, crossing routes more of a, a three- or four-second type pass, but you know what I'm saying. Maybe some back shoulder. Let the athletes grab the ball. We didn't even try for that. We even try to let our athletes grab the ball. <laughs> it's, that's, that, we got our asses kicked. But at the same time, the good news is that we don't have to worry about them uh, losing in the playoffs as Badger fans, and you're actually going to see a better playoff anyway because they were fraudulent, and uh, look at how damn good these teams are, LSU, Bama, Clemson, Ohio State. Oh, that's right. Um, It would be between Georgia and Ohio State if Ohio State loses, but Georgia, it kind of controls their own destiny, but um, it's going to be one or two in the in that SEC championship, Clemson's going to be undefeated. If Ohio State's undefeated, they can't take all three SEC teams over those. But Oklahoma blew their chance, and they're on the outside looking in now just because of the situation I said. Notre Dame, oh, Notre Dame. Watching Notre Dame-Michigan was just like watching Wisconsin versus Ohio State. Lots of people took that Notre Dame win total under because you are fake news. They were fake news. And uh, unfortunately, so is Wisconsin, but uh, they're out. Um, There's no way that they can dig their way out of this hole. There's no games that's going to do it. So uh, best bet, they get a New Year's bowl. We'll see what happens and how the, uh, the rest of the season pans out for them. I almost bet Michigan, some pretty people I, Pretty good handicappers that I trust took Notre Dame. Obviously, you saw Ralph wanting Michigan. Great play there. Um, I almost did, but I took the under instead. And all I have to say is fuck Jim Harbaugh because they were up by 30 points with five minutes left in the game. Notre Dame just wanted to go home. You could tell. They just they were running the ball. They punt it. Harbaugh throws the ball. He throws up. He just scores more points against them. You, that's that's not what you're supposed to do in college football. I don't care. That's a lack of dignity. You know, Harbaugh's weird like that. He doesn't care what other people think. You know, so I'm just gonna say with it, when he plays Ohio State at home, I am going to be rooting for Ohio State to kick their ass. You like that? All right, <laughs> uh, you know that's that was the main some of the main games that we watched. Obviously, Clemson took care of business against a terrible Boston College team. Alabama didn't need a, their starting quarterback against a terrible Arkansas team. Blew them out. I uh, tried to take the under in the FIU game. That didn't work. They fumbled a punt uh, and uh, gave Middle Tennessee State the score, which I thought it was going to go under until that happened. Uh, Illinois covered for me, took them at plus nine and a half, even though it was a letdown spot. It wasn't that much of a letdown spot because Illinois was kind of trending up a little bit and, uh, they're already losing. You know, it's more of a letdown spot when you're a pretty good team, maybe with one loss or zero losses, and then you beat a big team, then you let down, but Illinois already lost some games. So it was a somewhat of a letdown spot, but that thing got overblown. I mean, I only had that Purdue two points better, 2.5 points better maybe in the power ratings than uh, than Illinois. So that makes it more of a 6.5 line. I took it at 9.5. So I was happy about that. Rutgers beat Liberty. Uh, what a ugly <laughs> – how can you bet Rutgers? But at the same time, uh, it, it, I almost did because it looked like it felt right. Like how the hell can this team let Liberty go in there and beat them? Well, Rutgers didn't. They found some offense there. Might have to fade Rutgers next week. Um, Yeah, you know, Syracuse, Florida State. Florida State beat them 35-17. You know, Hornibrook played, actually, 
196 yards, 15 for 26. Good for Horny. Uh, maybe he has a little bit more creativity with this offense. Uh, Nebraska played with a backup quarterback. So did Indiana, but Peyton Ramsey's been there forever. He's been a starter. So 27 for 40, 350 yards. Uh, and then Nebraska had actually two quarterbacks going, McCaffrey and Luke McCaffrey and uh, Vidral. And uh, nothing really happened there. Obviously, I really thought Adrian Martinez was going to play. But either way, the, under that, that line was already given out, showing that Adrian Martinez probably won't play. Tulane versus uh, Navy. I could not believe that they came back 24 points to tie that game. Um, I was actually happy with the field goal since we had the hook. But, uh, you know, that kind of hurts my Tulane future there. But I still have Cincinnati on the other side that's looking good. Memphis almost blew it against Tulsa. I'll talk a little bit more about that misleading score. And it was somewhat misleading, let's just say. Kentucky, Missouri. Missouri can't, can't, can't play in the rain. They're a passing team. It was downpouring. Um, you can't overreact too much to that. Might be some value on Missouri coming up next week. Utah State with Gary Anderson. They're 4-3 and three now. Um, lost to Air Force. They didn't even look like they wanted to be at the game. Uh, they, very, they, they had less than 200 yards in offense. Just a shit performance. And, uh, you know, Gary Anderson's going to ruin that team. Air Force came to play. San Diego State goes to UNLV, starts the game well. I think they're up 14 to zip or 17 to zip, and then UNLV scores, and they only score three more points for the game. They're lucky to get out of that one, winning 20 to 17. Um, I, you know, I, the way I look at this game is UNLV did improve a little bit. They did beat Vandy, um, and then they had that big letdown last week, but the yards were wrong. And uh, San Diego State's not that good, but they're seven and one. I mean, we took the season win total. We took them to win the West. That's going to happen probably. Um, well, the, I guess the Hawaii game still matters a lot, but f- Hawaii's five and three, um, and I don't think they really lost many of the uh, Mountain West games yet. You know, they lost at Washington. I guess they lost Boise State and Air Force, but uh, you know. I think San Diego State still has to play a couple tough teams there. So we'll see how that bet that we made at plus, I believe, 160 and B in the season works out. And now to the NFL. And my, oh my, did they rear their ugly head again and the officials changed the outcome of a game. Unreal. Unfortunately, it was the game that we were on, Tampa Bay, plus two and a half. The officials swung the final score seven points, blowing the whistle for no reason as their fake field goal play, as the guy was hit, he fumbles, and it was clear fumble. But some jackass official blows it dead. When Tampa Bay picks it up and runs it for a touchdown. Okay. I mean, group of five college officials wouldn't do that. Most high school officials don't do that. That's how poor the officiating is in this league. And it's the NFL's fault because they have these 60 and 70 year old geriatrics out there thinking that they can see what's going on in the game. But what? why would you blow that whistle? If this was a playoff game, you would have heard the same shit you did with the Saints because now Tampa had a chance to score, but it still changed the momentum. I mean, every single little play affects the full rest of the game. So the officials changed the outcome of the game. And I'll tell you, we're 6-5 and five in the NFL. But being seven and four would have been a lot nicer and a lot more profitable, wouldn't it? <laughs> so, real sad that they did that. Packers, they finished strong, destroyed Kansas City. 
Although KC kind of did to themselves, fumbling the ball in their own side of the field and giving the Packers a short trip to the end zone. But they lost by seven. Packers covered the spread. And, uh, yeah, there's my other free pick right there. (laughs) Uh, Eagles destroyed the Bills. We were on the Eagles. Um, Happy about that. It was a premium play. The Eagles, uh, I knew they were better than what they were showing. But, um, (laughs) unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, they still have a very bad defense. Very, very bad defense. So, you know, we'll see what the line comes out next week against the Chicago Bears, who have been absolutely terrible. But they are who we thought they were. Well, they sure are who... Charger betters thought they were because uh, Matt Aggie blew the game. And, yeah, you can say Mitch Trubisky turned it over twice in the fourth quarter, fumbled it once through an interception. Sure. But what the hell is he doing passing the freaking ball when you're up six points and you're supposed to have the best defense in the league when you should be running the clock and punting it, leaving it to your defense instead of just giving them the touchdowns? I mean, it, Matt Nagy does not know how to coach football. Most of you listeners are a better game flow coach than Matt Nagy. Seriously. That's the problem. You hire guys that have never coached in their life. They've been, they're an offense coordinator. He's like a kid playing Madden. You know, a kid, a 10 year old playing John Madden that doesn't know how to finish a game, but he knows kind of the plays. You know, he, that's what he does. He comes home from school and, you know, gets his cheez its and, uh, sit there and plays Madden for four hours and the parents are just happy that the kid's out of their hair. That's Matt Nagy. He knows plays. He knows nothing about the flow of the game of football or how to win a football game. Absolutely amazing. We played the 49ers as a premium play. Got talked out of it in the Super Contest. Wish that never happened. 51-13. to 13. Jesus. They're the Patriots of the NFC. The Colts, they won, but they <laughs> kind of lost because uh, they should have won by a lot more than that. Everyone was on the Colts, minus five and a half, including myself. Wanted them to uh, show up a lot better than they did. Patriots covered against the Browns. No surprises there. We hit our under. The Patriots won by 14, covering the spread. Well, most of those spreads by about a point or so. So that thing landed really real close to the spread. I was scared to take the Browns. I mean, they had a shot to score a garbage touchdown and didn't. So uh, that's how kind of close that was. The Texans beat the Raiders. We hit the under 51 and a half. A lot closer than people thought. The Raiders were leading a huge portion of that game. All right. We'll we'll talk a little bit more about about the uh, NFL when D-Nasty comes on tonight for some fantasy football. Otherwise, let's get right into college football misleading final scores. We start out with SMU versus Houston. Houston outgained SMU by 135 yards, yet lost by three three to one turnover, which will hurt them. Uh, Keep in mind, though, Houston did have a 95 yard late in the fourth quarter trying to come back in that game. Miami versus Pittsburgh Pitt outgained Miami by 114 yards, yet lost by four. Three to one turnover ratio. Pitt pulled the Miami there. And Oklahoma versus Kansas State. Oklahoma outgained Kansas State by 71 yards and lost the game, screwing their playoff chances. Two to O turnover ratio helped K State right there. Holy smokes, Oklahoma. That was a huge win for Kansas State. Hello? You play to win the game. Illinois versus Purdue. Yards were about even, yet Illinois won by 18. Only a 2-0 to zero turnover ratio, too. Um, that's, that's, that shows that Purdue was... They should have done better. It's usually the other way around in Illinois games. Mississippi State versus Texas A&M. 
Uh, Mississippi State was only outgained by 10 yards, yet lost by 19. A 3 to 0 turnover ratio. I almost bought bet Texas AM too. Auburn versus LSU. The officials helped Auburn get down from 10 to 3, as you saw, <laughs> with some terrible pass interference. But uh, there's going to be no changes in my power ratings. LSU outgained them by 200 yards. So that that's, this score was a little misleading. LSU had that game uh, from a yards perspective by 10 to 12, uh, 14 points. San Jose State versus Army. Army outgained San Jose State by 27 yards and lost by five. Typical Army. Don't know what the hell happened to them. Oklahoma State versus Iowa State. Iowa State outgained Oklahoma State by 66 yards and yet lost by seven due to a three to one turnover ratio. Indiana versus Nebraska. Nebraska outgained Indiana by 59 yards yet lost by seven. Typical Nebraska. That's it. I feel like I'm talking about them every single week. One of these weeks, they're going to put it together and really pound someone uh, when Adrian Martinez gets back. Arizona versus Stanford. Arizona outgained Stanford by 23 yards, yet lost by 10. A 2-0 to zero turnover ratio. That's very typical Kevin Sumlin, Arizona. Memphis versus Tulsa. Tulsa outgained Memphis by 84 yards. <laughs> Oh, my Lord. And then uh, they lost by one point, missing the extra point. Arizona versus UCLA. Or, sorry, Arizona State uses UC versus UCLA. UCLA only outgained ESU by 10 yards, yet one by 10. They also had some turnovers there. So, um, some of that, though, and I have to point that out in some of these games, was just garbage time. They're just kind of holding on to their, their score. So, I try not to. There's a couple ones that I don't mention that I just feel was just fourth quarter prevent defense. These are the main ones, so hopefully you can find some value on the teams that outgained the others yet lost or fade the teams that won when they were outgained. Let's move right into college football week 10 betting spots. And we're going to start out with Michigan versus Maryland. Michigan could let down here after whooping Notre Dame's ass, but I don't think they will. Uh, because I, Michigan's kind of on a tear right now, and Maryland's really that bad. So I wanted to mention it, that it is a letdown spot, but I'm not buying into that one. Kansas State versus Kansas, both are in letdown spots here because both won their games up to the last seconds. But uh, K-State's win was bigger. <laughs> Maybe look at the under that game. Uh, Oklahoma State versus TCU is a dual letdown spot, but bigger for TCU, seeing that they beat Texas. Virginia versus North Carolina. North Carolina is a small one after beating their rival Duke in the last seconds. UCLA versus Colorado. UCLA beat a ranked uh, ASU team. All right. Ranked. And uh, I guess... uh, (laughs) It'd probably chalk up a win for them, but it's not like they beat USC. Colorado State versus UNLV is a letdown spot after they beat Fresno State. Colorado State beat Fresno State. Pretty big win for them. Get up spots. Colorado State versus UNLV. Um, UNLV is the one with the get up spot. UNLV needs to win out to be bowl eligible. They might try a little extra harder these till they get that seventh loss. Mississippi State versus Arkansas. Arkansas needs a W to remain bowl eligible. Six losses. Northwestern versus Indiana. Northwestern needs a W real bad, but I doubt they can do it here because there's six losses. Mississippi versus Auburn. Auburn needs a good bounce back here. Virginia versus North Carolina. Virginia needs a bounce back after losing to Louisville. Man, I'm starting to get a little concerned now that Virginia has three losses. I mean, we have that big season win total everyone was on over seven and a half. Do you think we're going to get there? What a stupid question that is. What a stupid question. But I watch you a lot. You ask a lot of stupid questions. Vanderbilt versus South Carolina. South Carolina needs a slump buster, and they're going to get one versus Vandy who just beat Mizzou a few weeks back. Now, Vandy is coming off a bye, 
Just thought I'd warn you right there about that one. Look ahead spots, not many. Kansas State versus Texas. Kansas State is in a sandwich here looking past Kansas. TCU versus Oklahoma State. TCU in a sandwich looking towards Baylor. And, yeah, that's that's pretty legit. Beat Texas, kind of looking towards an undefeated Baylor team, and they're playing Oklahoma State. But it's a slight, like I said, slight letdown spot for Oklahoma State. LSU and Alabama are both on bye weeks, unfortunately, because they have that huge game for week 11. I just cannot wait for that. All right. Let's move right into our big 10 power ratings. All right. And this is for week 10. Ohio State upgraded 1.5 1.5 points to 29.5. They're at the top of ESPN at 33.6 and top of team rankings at 40.3. I don't remember even seeing a team as high as 40.3 before. Uh, Penn State, 19. They're second best in the Big Ten. ESPN has them at 24.4. Team rankings has them 26.6. They're solid as hell, but I still think they're a little too high in uh, some of those sites. Wisconsin, I downgraded 1.5 points down to 17, getting blown out by Ohio State. Uh, ESPN has them at a little higher than me at 20. Team rankings has them at 24.8. Michigan, I have them at 16.75, a little upgrade there. Uh, ESPN has them at 18.5. Team rankings 19.8. Good job, Michigan. Uh, Minnesota is now our sixth best team in the Big Ten above Iowa, Michigan State, and Indiana. Minnesota 12.75, 12.9. 10.8 on team rankings and they're rowing the boat that's <laughs> what i kind of thought that was going to happen they had those three really bad non-conference games barely wind and then uh, now they're doing really well in the big 10 so that ticket's still looking good indiana they're sorry no i have iowa next uh, 12.5 and a little, little upgrade there they blew out northwestern well, Northwestern didn't score. Surprise, surprise. ESPN has them at 14.1. Team rankings 15.3. Michigan State, we I downgraded them big. Probably, what? Um, I think I downgraded them like three points or something. No, oh, two points. Um, from, and they're at, at yeah, 11. They're, they're eighth best. ESPN has them about the same as me. Um. ESPN has them at 10.9, and Team Rankings has them at 12.2. I just looked back. I had them at 13, so I had two-point downgrade getting blown out by Penn State. Indiana, 6.5. They're really good, and uh, you watch for Indiana this year. ESPN has them at 6.5. Team Rankings has them at 7.9. Nebraska, I have them down a point to 6. And I'm higher than ESPN, having them at 1.2 and team rankings at 2.7. I still think there's hope with Martinez if he comes back. Northwestern, big downgrade from 5 down to 3. But ESPN has a negative 1.8. Team rankings has them at 1.4. Purdue, I have down to a 1, losing to Illinois. Illinois, I have a positive, baby. Positive. Lovey Smith, the hell are you doing? (laughs) I have them at 1. ESPN has a negative 0.7. Team rankings is now positive, having them at one. Uh, Illinois, or sorry, Maryland, minus two. Bad team that plays fast. ESPN has them at minus 1.5. Team rankings at 0.3. And yeah, Rutgers beat Liberty, but they're still whale shit on the bottom of the ocean for me. That low at minus 16. ESPN is at minus 16.8. A little upgrade. And team rankings a little upgrade at minus 19.7. All right. Now it is time for our free college football play of the week for the first podcast until the next. And I am going with Notre Dame minus 17 and a half. Now, Notre Dame, everyone can say this is going to be a terrible spot for them because their hopes and dreams were crushed in the rain in Michigan, but let's just hold on right there. They knew that they were out of the playoffs when they lost to Georgia. I mean, how could you not, really? You know, <laughs> I mean, it would have took a, a, a small miracle for them to uh, get back in the playoffs. But uh, they lost to Michigan, but this is still a very good team. You know, 
averaging 6.35 yards per play, only giving up 5.12. Pretty hard schedule so far playing teams like Virginia, Georgia, Louisville, USC, you know. And now they're taking a Virginia Tech team that they are coming off a bye, but they're a little bit overrated here, you know. I mean, Virginia Tech, they got their butts beat by Duke by 35 points. Then they played teams like Old Dominion. They lost to Boston College by seven points. They played teams like Furman and won 24 to 17. Now they did beat North Carolina 43 to 41 a couple weeks back, but this is kind of their letdown situation, and they're going to be playing a pissed off Notre Dame team that I still think is a top 12 team for sure. As a matter of fact, I have Notre Dame ranked in my power ratings at 12. And I have Virginia Tech at 62. And this is a home game for Notre Dame. So there you have it. I think uh, Notre Dame rolls here, wins by a lot. And that is your free play for college football week 10. Let's get right into fantasy football with our guy, D Nasty. All right. Now it is time for a little fantasy football week 10. We have our guy, D Nasty, back. Fantasy football is brought to you by Thrive DFS, fantasy site for prop betting. Please visit theosbreakers.com slash Thrive dash DFS for a ten dollar bonus. Dave, huge week in fantasy, but man, how you been? Good, how you doing? And welcome, fantasy land people. Doing well, man. Been a couple bad weeks for me uh, as a fan, as you know. Uh, I think uh, two losing weeks for the Bears and two losing weeks for the Badgers definitely didn't help anything, and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, otherwise the bets have been all right, but the, uh, yeah, just being a fan sucked and, uh, I knew we were going to lose to Ohio state. I just didn't know it was going to be that bad, but, uh, you know, got to get into that. The, the bears, uh, I, I'm not sure who's worse Nagy or, uh, <laughs> or the quarterback. I think, it, I think it might be Nagy because when you're, you have the best defense in the league and you, you decide to throw the ball with six minutes left in the fourth quarter when you're up six points. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. Just put him in a shit position, and he fumbled once and turned through an interception. It's just like you're just begging to lose the game. So that's how my weeks have been going, Dave. <laughs> it's your <laughs> yeah, it's a tough loss against the Chargers. That's that's hard to handle. It is. It is. Uh, your Packers are go, doing well. Obviously, you faced a Mahomes-less uh, Chiefs team, but they're so injured on defense. I'm not even sure if that would have mattered that much, um, you know. And uh, the Packers are looking great. Only one loss, so we'll see what happens with them. Uh, I think your biggest competition is the Saints and the San Francisco 49ers. And holy shit, do they look good! So uh, you guys also have your work cut out for you in the playoffs. Oh yeah, but I can pencil you guys in the playoffs now. Six and one for sure. Seven and one. Seven and one. Yeah, seven and one now. Damn. And when's your bye week? Two weeks. In two weeks. Well, we have a lot of bye weeks this week, Dave. Why don't you go over those? All right, Grant. Well, we have four teams on bye this week, so this is a big week. Actually, week nine is going to be a big week. Uh, Falcons, Bengals, Rams, and Saints are all on bye this week. Uh, Drew Brees. Uh, some major players on the Saints, actually. We got Drew Brees, Michael Thomas, Kamara, uh, Latavius Murphy, who's come on while Kamara's been hurt. So a lot of big names on there. Rams, Cooper Cup, mm-hmm. uh, Jared Goff, if you're starting him, Brandon Cooks, but he's injured. We'll talk about that shortly here. Uh, and then actually Todd Gurley as well. So a lot of big names on that team as well. Bengals, you're probably not starting many people on this team, but you have, still have Joe Mixon, a couple of the receivers maybe, Tyler Boyd. Uh, Tate, maybe, if you're starting him, or Alex Erickson, who we'll talk about here shortly, too, and we talked about last week. Uh, and then Falcons, a couple major guys on that team, too. Devontae Freeman, Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, uh, and then Matt Ryan, who's actually injured as well. So we'll talk about him shortly as well. Yeah, man. Um, I got to tell you, the Bengals, I don't know what they're doing with A.J. Green there. I thought he'd be traded by now. Isn't tomorrow the deadline? Tomorrow at 4. 
Yeah, so I, I'm shocked that he, he didn't get moved. But if he doesn't get moved, I guess he's going to play. And you know, you know, he's healthy by now. They're just holding him out. They don't want an injury. We'll see if there's a team desperate. Um, now that the Chargers won, maybe they bring him over for some of their woes. Keenan Allen being ba- banged up, you know, and uh, another team that could use a wide receiver. I suppose maybe Pittsburgh could use an extra one over there. Washington's been hurt for a while. And um, I don't know who else would be a big buyer for A.J. Green. You know, the Jets. Yeah, the Jets. But but why would the Jets are sellers now? They're done. They they just got rid of somebody, actually. Um, uh, You know, their season's over. You know, so there's no reason that they would pick up a contract, I don't think, in my opinion, anyway. Um, You know, uh, C.J. Mosley is out five to six weeks. Center Ryan Khalil is uh, week to week with a knee injury. Uh, the Jets traded Leonard Williams to the Giants. So they're sellers, man. I just don't know who else would want, um, who thinks they're going to compete right now um, and needs a receiver, maybe Buffalo. I don't know. Buffalo seems to have a few targets yeah, already. That would be a great landing spot for him. Yeah, I think so. Well, anyways, those are key, your key injuries here. Um, wh- or Sorry, those are your uh, bye weeks. Why don't you move right into key injuries, Dave? Sounds good. Uh, one of the ones, actually, Kiev and I both are kind of sad about here. Uh, Houston Texans star J.J. Watt uh, confirmed he'll miss the rest of the year with a torn pectoral muscle. Uh, very sad to see him. He's had some bad luck over the last couple of years. One of my favorite players, uh, Wisconsin alum as well. But sorry to see he's going to be out for the rest of the year. So that's a big blow for your IDP if you have him. Really uh, Brandon, Brandon Cooks uh, left with a concussion this week. Uh, Josh Reynolds' stock is going up because of that. Uh, Miles Sanders did not return after a shoulder injury. Uh, There's no update on that so far. Uh, Quarterback Sam Darnold suffered a sprained thumb during the loss. Was it his throwing hand? I'm checking right now. You know, because I looked for that, and they didn't even say. It doesn't say, actually. That's weird. I I wonder why they didn't say, like, on any of the sites I looked. Maybe they just reported it as a sprained thumb. Well, I guess it'll come out. I mean, it's only Monday. (laughs) So we'll we'll, We'll get updates on that. Yeah, we'll get some more updates on that. So go ahead. Uh, And Chase Edmonds uh, left with a hamstring. Uh, And then a couple other just smaller injuries. Um, Jay Guard's receiver, Marquise Lee, injured his shoulder. And D.B. Westbrook actually suffered a neck injury, neck and shoulder injury. Uh, I was playing against him this week. He scored zero points for you, Kiev, but you still oh. beat me, unfortunately. Well, yeah, I wanted to thank you for starting, Mitch Trubisky. Um, <laughs> I got a total of two, two fantasy points. Well, he was a trending up player for both of us. You know it. Was he your nasty sleeper? No, it was Rudolph. He has, Rudolph has two touchdowns and 250 yards tonight. Nice, so. nice. Well, I, I'll tell you this, man. Um, thank you for starting Mitch. But uh, he actually threw decently, but just the interception. When they got to the red zone, Nagy panicked and did a bunch of stupid shit. <laughs> Running the clock out. And then he runs the ball with no timeouts after he um, throws the ball. And it, it's just, it, I don't know what he's doing. Then all of a sudden they had to spike the ball and take a field goal at the end of the second half. He's the worst clock management I've ever seen. But, um, that, you know, that's not Mitch's fault. But then again, you know, too bad he couldn't make it happen in the red zone. That's it's important. You know, you got to try to make it happen there. Exactly. And then just two two last injuries. Um, running back Matt Breida suffered an anchor, ankle injury. And Jeff Wilson Jr., one of the backup uh, running backs there, actually suffered a head injury and possible concussion. So those are all the – and then actually the major one, too, this week, uh, Brian Balaga with a hand injury for the Packers. I'm just kidding. That's not really that major, but <laughs> it's a Packer injury, so that that's major for me. Well, is it broken? Is he going to be out? No, it's just one of his fingers. I think is messed up, but that, they can play through that. Oh my god, tape it up. He's a, he's, he's a lineman, he's yeah. a big old lineman. No, he's he's fine. Yeah, no, you hit pretty much everything. Mark, I think you said Marquise Lee with the shoulder too, right? Yes. Um, and uh, that happened versus the Jets. And yeah, I don't know, Dee Westbrook. I thought he was a, like a late scratch or something. I looked like right away, and he's out of the game. I'm like, did I miss something here? <laughs> I was like, I always yeah, check my stuff with away. five minutes. Yeah, it was like he played like one or two plays and got injured. That's what sucked. Uh, Joe Flacco herniated disc is out next week. Um, that's interesting. Did you see that one? Um, and you hit the rest of them. Chase Edmonds. 
is the is the main one, I think, because he was really doing well with the Cardinals. That's that's sad that he's out, but that's about it. Um, Watt, yeah, terrible for IDP, but um, you know, such a great guy, obviously, and uh, great for all his community and um, just all around fantastic person. Uh, it sucks to see that happen to him. And uh, Brandon Cooks at least has a bye week for his concussion. So we'll see uh, if he's going to be out or not. But, yeah, I guess that Josh Reynolds stock would go up a little bit more. I'll start with the key waiver wire pickups then. And if you're really desperate and want a Denver quarterback, I guess you could pick up Brandon Allen. (laughs) And uh, he's going to be starting for Joe Flacco, uh, being that he's out. And so, uh, you know, some leagues people – uh, there's two quarterback leagues and things like that. That would be interesting for people to pick him up um, if needed. He'll be a big one for those types of leagues or any 16-team leagues. Chris Conley, I have him as a big pickup this week uh, with Westbrook and Lee injured, and we'll see what happens how long they're out. Keep your eyes open, but Conley might be a very big pickup. Um, Kenny and Drake, so he just got traded to the Cardinals. And the, obviously the Cardinals are, <laughs> they're trying to win this year. I, I was a little surprised that they did that, uh, sacrifice the third round pick for a, a running back. It's going to be, I, I'm thinking it's third or fourth. They didn't really announce it yet, but, um, it, it's just, it's just surprising to me that they're trying, they think they're going to do something in that division with Seattle, the Rams <laughs> and the 49ers. I, I, I disagree with that move. I just say, pick someone off the freaking off the dumpster pile, right? So, yeah. so I don't know why they did that, but it makes him worth a pickup. He's available in, I think, forty percent of Yahoo leagues. Um, now, now I think that Alfred Morris is already rostered from the Cardinals, and he's going to be the guy playing mostly on Thursday because he knows the playbook. He's been there a couple weeks, and uh, I think he's going to be the feature back for the Cardinals this week. Not saying that Kenny and Drake won't take over, but. They play on Thursday, so I can see Alfred Morris playing. I got Raheem Mostert if Brita and Wilson are out, right? Um, I, get, I, I like it. I, I, I like him for sure. I think he's going to be a big pickup here this week. And my last one is Auden Tate. And you might have mentioned him weeks ago, but I never did. Um, in case the Bengals do trade Adrian Green, Auden Tate will slip right into that role next to Tyler Boyd over there. And that's all I have for pickups, Dave. What do you have? Uh, well, actually, I just want to talk about two quick trades here as well if that happened if, since our last podcast. Um, Mohamed Sanu to the Patriots, so his stock is going up uh, due to that. And then Emmanuel Sanders to the 49ers from the Broncos. So just two trades you might want to keep in mind, too, as you're looking at your rosters and bye weeks. So just know the, those two guys, uh, two major receivers, switch teams there. So just make keep track of that for the trades. And then uh, two uh, quarterbacks that you might be surprised about. Jimmy Garoppolo, he's a little over 50% owned in Yahoo Leagues, which is kind of our border, but he has some nice matchups coming up. He has the Arizona Cardinals twice and Seattle in three-week span, uh, and he's got Emmanuel Sanders now as well. So if he's out there on the waiver wire, definitely worth a look, and he's already had his buy already. And this this might shock a little bit people right here, right now, but my next one, Sam Darnold. He's owned in 23% of the league. Just listen. Just listen. Uh, The Jets play the Miami Dolphins twice, the New York Giants, the Washington Redskins, Oakland Raiders, Cincinnati Bengals, and then the Baltimore Ravens. So pretty much a cake schedule. But the grain of salt, I'm still recommending this, but Sam Darnold could be good over those weeks against those poor teams. He could throw for at least a couple touchdowns and at least 200 yards. So... Be a bye week fill in if you need him or if you lost the quarterback. Uh, Mark Walton, he's the now the starter for the Miami Dolphins. Uh, definitely pick up one of the pickups of the week right now, other than the Cardinals backs now. And then Trey Carson. Everyone thought Ty Johnson was going to be the man for the Detroit Lions, but actually Trey Carson, ex-Packer, keep in mind, he was a third stringer on our team, but he is now the starter for the Detroit Lions. So definitely take a look at him. Wait, and- Ty Johnson's not the starter there? Uh, he started, but uh, actually Trey Carson got more carries and more touches. Wow. Okay. I, I think they were kind of doing a committee over there, aren't they? Well, Trey Carson uh, he, he led the backfield with 14 carries, while the rest of his teammates combined for 12 touches. Oh, wow. God, that's weird. He got the majority of them. Ty Carson, huh? 
I missed, Trey Carson. Trey, Trey Carson. I missed that one. So good job. And actually, I saw Mark Walton, but I, I forgot to put him down. So fantastic, Dave. And then uh, Josh Reynolds would be the last one, too, with Brendan Cooks hurt. He does have the bye, but if he does not come back after the bye, Josh Reynolds would be the guy for, you want for the Rams. Yeah, I wouldn't put a ton of money on him. Um, you know, a couple bucks if, you, if you're desperate there. But, uh, um, well, I mean, it's just – it's just it, why would you roster someone that might not even play? So maybe next week could be a pickup for him too, right? Yeah, I'm definitely. Not, I'm, I'm not so sure. I would do that and uh, like do it this week. All right, fantastic, Dave. Why don't you move into non-starters that are trending up into starting position this week? All right, great. Well, first one is going to be Kenyon Drake. He's uh, like you said, Alfred Morris might get some, uh, knows the playbook, but I think Kenyon Drake's still going to get a majority of the carries. Even though they're playing the tough 49ers D, I do like him as the starter for the Cardinals just for the bulk of carries he's going to get and just for the athleticism he brings. Uh, he's definitely going to be the main runner there. Alfred Morris might get some carries as well, but I like Kenyon Drake, even though against the tough 49ers D. Uh, I do like the Texans this week. Uh, they're looking good, even though they're playing a the tough Jaguars D. too. You wouldn't think that you'd like the Texans, but their offense is looking pretty good, and Deshaun Watson has been looking good. Uh, I do like the Colts against the Steelers. Steelers have been giving up a lot of points. Uh, their pass defense is not very good. So Jacoby Brissett, I look to have a breakout day against the Steelers. Uh, Dolphins and Jets, that could be a high-scoring game. Neither team is very good. Uh, Darnold, who I just talked about, could have a good day. Uh, whichever quarterback is starting for the Dolphins, I think Fitzpatrick. Uh, so, And then I think Mark Walton could even have a good day against the Jets. Uh, so we'll, the see, we'll see what happens with that because I think uh, it was another – Huge turnover day for the for the uh, Miami. Uh, they were winning fourteen to zip against the Steelers, and they ended up losing twenty seven to fourteen. So they haven't scored since the uh, first quarter. Fitzpatrick had two interceptions, I believe. At least I saw TJ Watt rip it out of his hands for at least one fumble. <laughs> no, it says two fumbles. He had one, two fumbles in one loss, so that could. Uh, that could change a few things with old Fitzpatrick. So we'll see what happens there. Yeah, it's going to be a sloppy game, but it could be higher scoring because neither defense is very good. So uh, I look for both of those teams that have some high, some higher scoring fantasy players this next week. Uh, and then actually I do like the Bills this week. Uh, they're playing a poor Redskins team. So I do look for the Bills. Josh Allen, Devin Singletary is coming on. I like him. Uh, he had a touchdown this past week on a catch. So I do like Devin Singletary is one of the guys I do like this week against the Redskins. And then I do like Chris Carson and Russ, Russell Wilson against the Buccaneers this week as well. well and then the last Well, Russell two, Wilson and Carson are starters, though. So, yeah. yeah. But Marvin Jones I do like against the Raiders. Uh, yeah. He's been there usually, so I do like him. And actually, I do like Trey, Trey, Trey Carson and Ty Johnson against the Raiders defense as well. Oh, fantastic. I like, I like those, absolutely. And uh, great picks there. I have, uh, and, and it's funny you, you mentioned uh, uh, versus the Jets. I, I have Devontae Parker as a non-starter trender up here um, versus Jets banged up D. Their D is very banged up. I think um, their uh, Tremaine, Tremaine Johnson, their their cornerback, is out too. So Parker can have a huge day. Uh, Kalen Blage, I think he's going to get a few few runs, but then again, Walton is starting. So I'll just say. Probably Walton is a guy trending up against the Jets banged up D with C.J. Mosley out five to six weeks, right? Exactly. And if Williams gone too. Yeah, yeah, that too. And uh, Devin Singletary against the bad Redskins D I have trev- trending up. Some Not everybody starts Devin Singletary. I think he's a starter this week. Joey Gallup against the Giants bad defense. Mari Cooper's been kind of banged up too. But Joey Gallup is going to be the guy that's going to be Gallup. Michael Gallup. Sorry, Michael Gallup. I don't want to say Joey. Michael Gallup. And uh, he's going to be a very good uh, player this week. I, I project he's going to go at least 15 points or higher. Alexander Madison, uh, the running back, backup for Delvin Cook against the Chiefs. The Chiefs' D is so bad that he's going to get some yards, and I think they're going to be winning, and he's going to get some garbage yards too. So I like the backup here. I think he's a flex-worthy guy this week, Alexander Madison. Uh, for for uh, and, and this is just one of those situations how you see how Chase Edmonds scored so many points even with Johnson, and it's like 
I think Alexander Madison is going to score. And I have Emmanuel Sanders. Uh, he is, he's been kind of been put in people's pockets. You know, he's not exactly a waiver pickup because most, pe- most people own him. But it's a, against the Cardinals. I think he's going to get some points against the Cardinals. And, uh, you know, uh, he, I think he's definitely a, a great pl- a person to start this week. Emmanuel Sanders as a wide receiver, too. Possibly even a wide receiver, one. Who are your busts, Dave? Um, Bust, I'm looking at the Eagles this week. Uh, I say Sanders and Jordan Howard. I don't like them against the tough Bears defense. Uh, And then I don't like uh, Matt Moore against the Vikings this week, assuming that Pat Mahomes isn't back yet this week. Uh, I do not like the Redskins against the tough Bills D either. So AP, he hasn't done nothing all year. And whichever quarterback starting for the Redskins, I think it's going to be Case Keenum. Uh, I don't like them against the Bills tough defense. Uh, And then... The Chargers, actually, the Packers, I think, are going to come to play this week on defense, and the Chargers have not looked good on offense at all. Melvin Gordon did get a touchdown this week and last week, but he's only been having 30 to 40 yards each week total. So I'd say the Chargers, Melvin Gordon, and Phillip Rivers, I do not like this week against the Packers. And then the Ravens, actually, the surprise one probably for you guys, but playing against a tough Patriots D, I'm, I'm a believer in the Patriots D now, and I think the Ravens and Lamar Jackson is going to have a tough day against the Patriots. Yeah, most likely. Um, and uh, the Patriots, uh, that defense, is, like we say every week, it, it's so good. So <laughs> agree with you on those, man. Uh, Duke Johnson, my, my bus are Duke Johnson against a very good Jaguars defense. I'm not sure he's going to do as good as he did last week. He had a decent week last week. Uh, Adrian Peterson is a bust, and Geis might be back. He's practiced in full pads, so... He might be starting back for the Redskins, making Adrian Peterson not worth it. And the Bills have a good run defense. So don't love Adrian Peterson at all this week or possibly for the weeks coming up. Derrick Henry, versus, he had a good week last couple weeks, but now he's playing a pissed off Panthers that got run up all over the place. Oh, yeah. San Francisco just, just devastated. Now they're coming home. They're going to step up their game. Um, I have Ryan Tannehill as a bust, too, against the Panthers. I think uh, they got lucky to beat Tampa last week. Nick Chubb. Sorry, Dave. He's a bust versus the Broncos at mile high this week. As a matter of fact, Cleveland, (laughs) they they better win some games if they think they're going to have a shot at the playoffs this year, right? I agree. Yeah, they're, uh, what, they win two games so far? Not good at all so <laughs> the cleveland browns are kind of in the chicago bears area right now which is not looking good uh melvin gordon he's a bust against a very good packers d coming up this week as well so those are my busts, dave uh my nasty sleeper of the week is you said it already i have marvin jones and uh i think he's gonna have a field day against the raiders my man I like the Marvin Jones pick. Uh, my D nasty sleeper of the week is going to be Devin Singletary. Uh, I like him this week against the poor Washington Redskins defense. And I think he's going to only get more carries going forward throughout the rest of the year. And he's eventually take over Frank Gore. And I think this is the week that he busts out. I love it, man. I love it. He was on the top of my trending up list. So fantastic, Dave. Well, thank you so much for coming back on talking a little fantasy football, my man. Have a great rest of your week, Dave. And uh, I'll see you in a couple weeks for the Iowa game. Sounds good. Have a good night. All right, everyone. That was D Nasty. You can tweet him at D Nasty Fantasy. Thank you, everyone, for listening to this podcast. Have a fantastic rest of your week. And go get some wins.